Thank you so much. Okay, good. So uh, before we start, uh, let me introduce our our guests. So my name is uh, Dr. Sulaf Zodi. I am a case manager at Achibadam Adisawa Health Point. So today's uh, title will be MR Guided Radiotherapy, which is a new personalized approach. So our professor would be Professor Enis Kozihar. Is a radiation radiation oncologist at Achibadam Maslak Hospital, which is found in Turkey and uh, is one of is part of one of the largest healthcare groups in the world. So I'll just give um, uh, the floor to Professor Ines and he will introduce more about his works and uh, what he does at Achibadam. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me open. Okay, can my camera is on? So good afternoon to everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to present our experience in this meeting. Uh, I would like to share our slides. Oops, sorry. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes, we can see. Okay, can I start? Yeah, yeah, just introduce yourself and then uh, your, the hospital you work at, and then we can go forward with the presentation. Okay, let me ask first uh, are there any radiation oncologists or oncologists among the audience? Uh, if there are uh, oncologists, can you? write something to your to the chat uh, so there are no radiation oncologists or oncologists huh? and uh, okay so i will continue with my talk uh, i think tesfaye behailu uh, raised hand i saw only one are there any other? Yeah, I think uh, is a is an okay. oncology. So, so today, today I'm going to talk about a very specific, a very new technology, uh, which we used since four and a half years in our department. Uh, this is MR guided radiotherapy. It's a new personalized approach. This is my conflicts of interests. So this is the outline of my talk. In, initially, I'm gonna talk about, I'm going to introduce our center and then I will explain our journey with Meridian and I will show our MR guided radiotherapy workflow. And I will show the major treatment sites we have treated so far. So this is the Istanbul map. Maybe you, you can be familiar, but this is the famous Bosphorus, which divides the Asia and Europe. So uh, Istanbul, this is the largest uh, city in Turkey with population of 18 million. So it's situated in the both side of the uh, Bosphorus. So one side is on the Asian side and the other one is in the uh, European side. So we have, uh, our group has uh, more than 25 uh, hospitals all over in Turkey. And we have four uh, hospitals in Istanbul with radiation oncology. So two of these hospitals uh, is at the European side. So this is the Maslak where I'm working at. And, and the other one, uh, this is Atakant hospital. So these two hospitals in the European side. And these are our satellite centers. And the other two one is at Atashehir and Altunizade, and they are at both at Asian side. So uh, my hospital, where the hospital I worked is at Maslak Hospital, which is close to the uh, new airport. And we started in 2009 with this hospital. So when we had the uh, hospital in 2009, we had four bunkers. And at that time we had two linear accelerators, which is called Trilogy and Rapidark. And the third one was a, a CyberKnife G4 unit. And the, we had an empty bunker at that time. The fourth bunker stayed empty until 2018. So in 2018, 
the management built a second uh, building on the backside of the original hospital and connected with skywalks. So at that time, they decided to invest a new technology, which is called MR-guided radiotherapy. And so for the, uh, the empty bunker, uh, the management decided to buy uh, this new technology. And also we replaced our other machines, uh, which is called true beam. And two true beams are replaced at the same time. Uh, and we also had a new technology, which is called MR-guided radiotherapy. So when we compare these machines, uh, we call it SPRT, which is stereotactic radiotherapy, which means giving a very focalized and high dose to the tumors, to the targets with radiotherapy. Uh, so it's a very precise method. So we used in different indications, but for example, we use brain, spinal, prostate indications and other indications with this machine, with CyberKnife. And we have treated, usually we preferred lung, bone, the other indications for uh, linear accelerators. And we couldn't treat these indications, which is hepatobiliary system and ultracentral lung tumors with these technologies because it was not very safe to treat them. So after 2018, these patients switched to this machine and we started to treat almost all SPRT patients using our uh, MR guided system. So why we decided to treat our patients with this new system, it comes because of these several advantages. One is an, uh, there is an MRI inside. So we see very well, where is the tumor and where is the uh, critical organs, the, the structures. And you can make adaptive treatment, which means in every fraction, you can make a new plan and treat the patient according to this new plan, according to the anatomy of the day. So, you know, in every day, anatomy changes. For example, tumor can change shape or move or normal organs has different uh, fullness or emptiness so that they can push the tumor and they can move on the, move the tumor so that every time we adapt, we have to adapt our treatment to the patient. And the other uh, important uh, technolo technological advantage is online CineMR tracking. So continuously we track the tumors. So none of these machines, the other machines have these uh, advantages. So if we compare this last advantage, which is online CineMR, because you have to, if you want to treat a tumor uh, with very high doses, with very ablative doses, you should see the tumor. So let's say on the left side, this is a, a CBCT, which means it's a tomography for in um, general Linux. And as you see here, you can barely see the organs. I mean, where is the uh, bowels? Where is the prostate? Where is the rectum? You, can, you cannot see them very well. You can only see the bone and the other soft tissue structures. But uh, when we look at the cyber knife, cyber knife doesn't give any anatomical background during treatment to the physician. And then the system says that the, it's a robotic system. It's very safe. It's very precise. But you, you have to rely on these uh, lines. I mean, if this line is like this, it's like, you know, purple is, it's a, it goes through the zero uh, axis, zero e, X axis, uh, then it means that everything is okay. But as a physician, how can you believe that you are treating the tumor or how, uh, you, how can you be sure that you cannot miss the tumor? So in this technology, MR guided radiotherapy with breath hold, patient stops breathing and we tell the patient and patients see the screen so that the, we tell the patient that their tumor is red and we are treating the yellow area. So with Brethold, patients stop breathing. And when the tumor is inside the yellow boundaries, the system gives the radiation. And when it's out, the system stops the beam. So this is very important technology. Look at that. Now the system is giving radiation. So... Uh, recently, we had a second machine, which is called ETHOS system.
system, as you see here, we replaced one of our true beam system and we had an Etos system. So the difference of Etos is from other linear accelerator is this machine works with artificial intelligence. So it uses the artif artificial intelligence software. And so that now we have the capability to treat both uh, adaptive radiotherapy using, uh, we can treat with adaptive radiotherapy using both CT-based or MR-based uh, system. So ETHOS system has a CT-based adaptive radiotherapy and uh, Meridian system as MR guided adaptive radiotherapy. So these are the different machines in the world which we use for treatment of patients, several different Linux from different companies, CyberKnife, uh, reflection system, tomotherapy system, and these are the other systems. So what is the, uh, what is common for these systems, even for MR guided radiotherapy? All of these systems gives have, have the similar dose distribution, which we call IMRT or VMAT treatment. The difference comes from IGRT actually. So MR imaging is a completely new method uh, for imaging during radiotherapy. So this is again, how we get the imaging. These are the uh, CBCT images uh, from coming from conventional Linux. This image comes from CyberKnife. There is no anatomical background. There is no anatomical uh, screen or anatomical data. And this is coming from ETO system. So for MR guided radiotherapy, you have a very good uh, soft tissue contrast. And so that you can see very well, for example, in this patient, you see very well, where is the tube, where is the prostate, where is the rectum? And this is the sagittal view so that we can treat the patient after we see and delineate these structures. And on the right uh, lower panel, you can see the Cine MR tracking during radiotherapy. Okay, there is no movement here. There is no breathing effect for this area because it's a prostate area. But uh, please uh, see that the first video shows that uh, while we are treating the, two, uh, the prostate, suddenly, a gas comes from the rectum and pushes the prostate out of the boundary. So this is very important. So if in normal conventional LINAC, the system doesn't stop the beam and doesn't see that there is a gas passage. On the right side, the, you can see a similar video. Uh, again, you see this is the prostate and these are the seminal vesicles. And during the treatment, gas comes from upwards to below and it pushes the uh, seminal vesicle especially, and it takes out from the uh, yellow borders. So it means that you are missing the tumor and you are treating the critical structure instead of treating the tumors. So, so movement is important. So these images are obtained with our MR guided system. And as you can see for different tumors, you know, even a breast tumor, you know, a mediastinal tumor, a laryngeal tumor, and this is a uh, lung cancer or lung tumor, bladder fullness, bladder tumors, abdominal lesions. So there are many, many structures which moves with breathing. So breathing is motion management is very important. Uh, as you see on the lower left panel, you see that there is a, a liver tumor here and it moves with uh, breathing. So when you stop breathing, you have a very good uh, result. So this is the imaging uh, obtained in a prostate cancer patient. Patient had unfortunately had a prostasis and this prostasis causes a lot of artifacts. So this is what we had with CBCT, which is an imaging during radiotherapy, but you can barely see the borders of the rectum or prostate. So you cannot see very well the soft tissues, but even with this um, with this um, prostasis, uh, we had an artifact here around the prostasis, but still we can see very well the borders of the uh, bladder, uh, prostate and borders of the rectum. So you can make a good plan with this. The other advantage is uh, we don't need 
invasive, expansive, uh, and uh, these uh, systems may cause complications. So there is no need for marker insertion or uh, space OR uh, for these patients, which we use in conventional radiotherapy. But the advantage is not only comes from MR imaging, and we know that online adaptive planning, you know, this is what I uh, explained you before, according to the anatomy of the day, we can treat the patient. And the other one is automatic target tracking and functional MR is the other important issue. So this is the adaptive, explains how adaptive planning is made. So when the patient is inside the machine, we on the treatment table, we make an online planning according to the anatomy of the day, we compared the original plan with predicted plan. And as we see here, tumor gets lower doses compared to the original plan. And the critical structures, rectum and leather, receives higher doses compared to the original plan. So then we adapt the plan. We make a new plan. And as you see here, now everything is perfect. We get a very good target dose compared to the original one. And as you see here, the the uh, critical structure doses are decreased so that we are uh, seeing a complication in these organs becomes less. And the, the other issue is there is no risk of missing the tumor because it's a good way to be sure of treating the target for a physician. As you see here, this is the prostate example. This is another example. As you see here, there's a very small tumor in the abdomen, in the uh, abdominal area, it's a very small lymph node we are treating with this technology. And this is another lung lesion which moves, uh, it's touching the diaphragm, so it moves very a lot uh, with breathing. So with breath hold, we can successfully treat this patient. And the last one on the right side is the pancreatic cancer. It's an inoperable pancreatic cancer treated with uh, this CINEMR imaging. So the other issue is the other advantage is the functional MR and radiomics. Uh, there is a tumor response prediction with every day by getting MRI and comparing these MRIs so that using the functional MR with DVI or with radiomics, you can predict the tumor response and you can either escalate or de-escalate the treatment intensity. However, this uh, study is are still ongoing and in clinical routine, we don't use functional MR for treatment of our patients, but we are sure that it will be uh, affecting our clinical practice in the uh, near future. So if you look at the history of the Vuray MR Linux, it started in Washington University in 2012 with a Cobalt 60 version and in 2017, they started to work with a 6MV, 3 triple F uh, MR Linux. So when we had the machine, it was only one year later, and we were the first center in Turkey, the third center in Europe, and the ninth center in the world. So uh, as I said, as I mentioned before, our uh, colleagues uh, who worked at the satellite centers, they also have treated their patients in our site. And uh, as the machine was full, so we decided to buy a second machine to the Ajiba Adam Al group in 2022. So now the patient number increased more than 30,000 patients uh, were treated in the world, all over the world. So this is how we started in 2018. We started with an official contract and then we made a bunker preparation. And in May, the, all the boxes arrived to our center and uh, the construction started. And in September, 2018, we have treated our first patients. And before go live, before starting the first patients, we have made very uh, intensive studies. Like we, we defined volumetric dose constraints, we send our technicians to MR training. Uh, we made journal club every week at our department and all the staff attended this meeting. We made on-site visits. We have made treatment planning system studies. 
and we try to describe our infrastructure workup. And these are the setup studies, and also we made adaptive planning studies on volunteers. So this is the audiovisual coaching, actually. This is the patient with this prismatic glass. And on the back side, there is a screen. This is an upside screen. It's a treatment delivery uh, screen so that patient can see what we were doing on the outside of the treatment room, so on the treatment console. So uh, they can watch uh, our uh, study and they can follow their CineMR during uh, treatment. So we help these, uh, we help these patients with audio, both audio and visually uh, visual way. I'm seeing, I'm just looking for some questions, but I think I'm going to uh, respond these later. So let me go on. Uh, so this is the what the patients see. Actually, it's like a video game. Huh? Like, you know, the patients see their tumor and we tell them that their tumor is red. And when they stop breathing, the system gives radiation uh, to this uh, yellow border area. So this is our final uh, data in four years. As you see here, prostate SPRT is number one indication, following by lung SPRT, other indications, liver SPRT, abdominopelvic lymph nodes, pancreas SPRT, and adrenal SPRT, ray radiation, and the other uh, small percentages. So the major advantages of MR-guided radiotherapy as a summary is better soft tissue contrast and visualization of the targets and critical structures. And there is no need for invasive marker insertion. Uh, and we, we use smaller PTV margins, uh, which has a lower normal tissue radiation exposure. And uh, we use online adaptive radiotherapy according to the anatomy of the day in usually in SPRT and hypofractionated patients. And I said before, uh, the functional MR and radiomix are still on research phases. So we have to wait the results of these studies. And then finally, the real-time real tumor tracking during treatment is an important uh, advantage of the system. So let's try the major treatment sites. The major treatment sites, worst one is prostate cancer. This is a delineation of a prostate cancer patient in our clinic. As you see here, this is the tumor. This is the 50% isodose. The red line is the 100% isodose. And uh, we, as you see here, initially I have shown you that, or we compared original plan and predicted those, the dose according to the uh, original dose uh, with the new anatomy. So it, we are not very happy because the, the target dose decreased and the normal structure doses increased. The system, so we re-optimize the dose, we make a new plan, and then we correct these adaptive, with this adaptive plan, the uh, target doses and critical structure doses. So this is again the prostate cases. So we published our uh, initial results and it was the second publication in the world on prostate uh, cancer treatment with MR-guided radiotherapy. So we reported our 50 patients. And in this report, we explained the reasons for adaptive radiotherapy. So what we observed is actually, we didn't see any grade three or more toxicity. So for lung cancer patients, for high-risk lung cancer patients, we treat our patients, especially the central lung, ultra-central lung tumors or metastases, uh, and some indications with uh, lung SPRT. And even now, the, we can treat the patient with the same day, uh, you know, uh, track. So a patient comes in the morning, we see the patient, we decided to treat her with a single dose radiotherapy, then we make a plan, we, we obtained an MR guidance, MR guided scan, and now we make a plan. And in, with, with delivering 30 gray, with single fraction, the patient just leaves the uh, hospital uh, without spending their time. So this is a dose distribution on the central lung tumor. 
This is a periphery lung lesion, actually. There are two lesions on the left and the right. And so we decided to treat the left tumor. As you see here, this is a very fast video. Normally, this is not that much fast, but when this tumor is inside the yellow area, the system gives radiation and then stops the beam. So pancreatic cancer is an important area and the gold standard is surgery, but we know that chemotherapy is the backbone of treatment in borderline locally advanced and metastatic disease. And we know that non-ablative radiotherapy improves local control, but overall survival benefit has not been proven. So this is a pancreatic cancer case. This is the MRI. This is the contouring of the patient. And this is the uh, CBCT during treatment. So we usually do SPRT with five times egg gray. And we presented our results in Astro 2021. Uh, and uh, we shared our results together with Miami Cancer Institute and Detroit uh, Henry Ford Hospital. And our uh, one-year local control is 95% almost, and the two-year local control is 83%. And these numbers are very important for pancreatic cancer patients. So this is the details of this uh, abstract. So we had an excellent uh, local control. However, distant metastasis, free survival, progression survival, free survival, and overall survival is not as good as uh, the local control. But still, uh, we believe that as chemotherapy, uh, started to treat patients more and more, uh, we have to add uh, radiotherapy to the selected patients. So oligometastatic disease is the second area which we have treated a lot. What is brain, liver, lung, adrenal, lymph nodes, and bone metastases? So this is a liver metastases. It's visible on the right side of the uh, liver and uh, the problem here is this tumor is very close to the colon, so we tried to decrease our fractionation and we decided to select 8 times 7.5 gray, and the BED dose is about 100 uh, centigrade, so which is very good. And this is the automatic tracking during BMON. This is another uh, liver tumor. As you see here on the left lobe, there is a tumor, and with CNA MR imaging, as you see here, it's very difficult to treat this patient because it's very close to the heart and also it's very close to the stomach. So it's in between. So it, it's a great chance to have MR guided radiotherapy so that you are 100% sure about where you are treating. So this is our results for liver metastases. We published about 60, 26, 26 patients and we had a one-year local control of 95%. The adrenal metastasis is another indication, right or left adrenal, no fiducials needed. And usually left adrenal tumors are more difficult to treat because the stomach is there, the colon is there, and the optimal doses can be delivered to these tumors. And we also published, well, not published actually, we presented our data in Astro 2021, two years ago. Uh, and this is another interesting case called ovarian cancer oligoprogression. As you see here, previously this patient had several operations, several surgeries and several radio uh, chemotherapy. And at the end of chemotherapy, there is only two lesions which we call oligo residual disease. And as you see here, it's just uh, between the uh, different organs, like colon or duodenum, and as you see here, it's very close to the colon. So what we did is we delineate these structures, as you see here and here, we delineate them and treat them very nicely. So this is a video of a, the, the ovarian cancer patient, and this is the, the on the right side, you see the, the small uh, lymph node. So this is an interesting case. Maybe you see a lot of HCC, but if patient has a vena cava thrombosis, 
if there is a macrovascular invasion, there is no any other chance other than radiotherapy. So this is an interesting case we have treated. Renal tumors are also very a new indication. Instead of making surgery, we know that local control rates are more than 90%, but usually we, from now on, we, medic, we usually prefer uh, this treatment for medically inoperable and fragile patients. And this is an interesting recurrent cervical stump cancer. A uh, patient had a supracervical hysterectomy in 2016. And two years later, patient came with a bilobular treatment at the cervical stump. And PET-CT have shown that there is no, uh, there is no uh, regional or distant metastasis. So this is the change in GTV during the radiotherapy. We initially treated her with external beam radiotherapy. And then we, because as it's almost impossible to treat this patient with brachytherapy, we decided to treat this patient with uh, SPRT boost using our Meridian MR guided radiotherapy system. So we published this paper, uh, this case report in advances in radiation oncology. And if you're a star, if you're interested in, you can reach these publications. So as a summary, Advantages of MR-guided radiotherapy is there is no need for markers, and we can obtain MR imaging of anatomy of the day, and we use smaller margins, and we can do daily plan adaptation and the continuous real-time CNA MR tracking during treatment is a very important issue for this patient. I think it's almost half an hour. Uh, this is our staff. Uh, these are uh, this young guy is our br brilliant uh, medical physicist and the doctors and we have radiotherapy technicians and we have a medical physicist team. So far, we have uh, published more than fifteen publications, some case reports, some case series. Uh, so we had to do our best uh, for this patient for this uh, system. And this is the, the only and the first uh, MR Linux book. And I'm the editor of this book together with Gemma Null and Sarah Hackett from, uh, from Holland. So we published, uh, it's about 500 pages book. Uh, and it was written by uh, the people all around the world who uses MR guided radiotherapy. So we use this, uh, their experience and they, uh, we published this uh, important book uh, recently. So I think this is my uh, last slide. And then I finish here, uh, maybe with Dr. Surafel, we can move on to the questions or first, and then we have some questions. I prepared some questions to the audience. So if you wish, uh, we can. Yeah. So we have uh, one question here from Edom. It says, how long does it take to do adaptive planning? And uh, and also what immobilizations are used for prostate cancer? Yeah, thank you very much. It's a very interesting question. And it's a very good question, actually. I didn't mention the treatment time. Uh, it's really important uh, issue because from door to door, usually an adaptive treatment takes about 45 minutes. So sometimes it goes up to half an hour and sometimes one hour, depending on the complexity of the uh, treatment planning. Uh, we contour daily, yes. Uh, at the workflow of the system, uh, everybody has a role. So, but number one role goes to the RTT technicians. I mean, because they're almost always there, but the radiotherapist, uh, time to time comes uh, in different uh, different workflows or in the different steps of the workflow. Uh, but initially, in the first six months, uh, we were very uh, anxious and everybody was there. But after six months, we decided uh, that, you know, the what time is the best time for us so that we can go and be there. So nowadays we only check the GTV and the CTV if there is a CTV. And then uh, the technician also uh, 
contours the uh, critical structures and they also deal with uh, bubbles and gas and normal uh, normal anatomy so um, the radiation oncologist uh, almost always there but usually they call us they just ring our phone and they said, okay, doctor, I'm gonna take this patient two minutes later. If you'll be here, I'll be very happy. So then in two, three minutes, we arrange our job and then we move, we go to the uh, to the, the system. So the, the immobilization is also an important and critical uh, question. Uh, we don't use any immobilization because the reason for that, as we are adapting all the treatment there is no need to use immobilization. So we just leave the patient on the bed with some you know, uh, support on the, uh, on the knee. And uh, almost there is only these, uh, these important issues. So we don't use any uh, immobilization in our patients, just a soft mattress, uh, a, a, near, a near rest, uh, and that's all. We give them a, a headphone to listen music and to cancel the, the noise of the MR. And also, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, okay. Yeah, good answer. Okay. I think uh, we have... I think there is a question another... asking the contraindication of MR therapy. Actually, the only contraindication yeah, yeah. is contraindication to going to MR. I mean, if you patient, if you cannot put the patient to the MR, then it's contraindicated for the treatment. The other one is uh, some patients have claustrophobia, and we really have difficulty to put these patients. But the number of these patients are very few. Sometimes we give them the special glass, which they feel that they are outside of the machine, or uh, we give them some kind of sedatives time to time before the treatment so that they can tolerate the treatment well. Um, actually, so we have also continue. the question of Mebra to Gember Tagan. Uh, good afternoon. Among cases treated or different organs for how long they become symptoms free and cured totally. So this is actually depends on the uh, the staging, the localization of the tumor, the tumor type. So it differs, it differs significantly, but our number two indication is one is prostate cancer. The second one is the oligometastatic disease and then uh, GI tumors uh, and GU tumors also follow these indications. Um, a question comes from Dr. Kifle Tilahun asking apart from training for human resource, how expensive is the machine? Actually, as a medical doctor, I really don't know what is the uh, price of the machine, but what I know is it's almost two or three times uh, more than a conventional uh, machine. But this is the only thing I, I can uh, respond. Uh, thank you very clear, good presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sharing news, the art of management of cancer. So, why Other question is, yeah. So there's a question uh, from Beimnet Tigutsu Haile. What factors hinder the implementation of this approach in low and middle income countries? Uh, actually, this is an expensive uh, technology uh, and also, uh, it's really very, it's not really very easy to implement the system. Uh, there are some uh, obstacles, uh, but I believe that the future of radiotherapy will be MR guided. And in the future, most of the centers will have this technology. It's uh, increasing, uh, increasing and increasing. Uh, well, so please tell us survival after treatment. We cannot say that because I told you we have, we're treating different 500 patients, 500 cancers, different cancers, different, uh, different disease. So every patient's survival is related with their own staging or the treatment they have received so far. 
So it's not possible to give a survival, but what I can say with this system, our local control rate is very high. It's usually more than 90%. And the last question comes from Alebachev Vandnev. What about foreign body, wooden body, PT to take MR? As far as I understand that, they're asking if there is a, uh, for example, metallic implant in the body, what we are doing. So this is really tough because recently we had a patient coming from a war zone and in his body, he had a lot of uh, metals. So what we did is uh, we couldn't uh, treat this patient because uh, the MRI makes the patient heat. And if you have, uh, you know, metal implants in the body like sharp nails, like the, you know, like arms uh, related with, you know, guns. So if you have these uh, metallic bodies, they may heat and they may damage some vascular structures and it may cause uh, some, uh, maybe some bleeding. So because of that, uh, we do not, uh, we don't allow these patients to be treated with the guided radiotherapy. And the, any case of tumor lesion syndrome following radiotherapy, you can make with your clinical experience. It's a very good question, Dr. Sam. Uh, asks, asks me about the tumor lesus syndrome. And as you know that tumor lesus syndrome happens usually all after hematological malignancies and the use of uh, the chemotherapy. So in the radiotherapy, it's very rare that, you know, tumor lesus syndromes are reported. So uh, we, we didn't see any tumor lesus syndrome uh, in our patients, but uh, we had some concerns about the treatment of uh, huge tumors. We had some protocols, which is called lattice treatment. And if we treat these patients, we follow the patients with the, uh, every other day with blood samples so that if we are suspicious about the tumor lesus syndrome, then we hospitalize the patient or, you know, we treat the patient according to, uh, according to their uh, findings. Yes, I think Dr. Shrofel, these are the last questions. Uh, yeah, I think uh, our questions are, are finished. And then we can proceed with, uh, if everybody can fill the form provided in the chat box. And then uh, after answering those questions, you'll get one CEU points from EMI. And uh, this is a participation points. Uh, so, I mean, we can continue with uh, the questions if they are on your side, Professor, or I can. Uh, uh, I can show two of them. The uh, I will show two of them. <clears throat> Question one is which of the below is not related with the advantage of uh, MR Linux? One, image guidance with MR. Two, adaptive radiotherapy playing according to the anatomy of the day. Three, Cine MR tracking. Four, functional use of uh, MR during radiotherapy. And the last one is need of fiducial markers. So please tell us your uh, response. So Dr. Shrafel, how are we gonna do it? Yeah, so... So I think uh, it maybe people can box. raise people can raise their hand with chat. Uh, yeah, if it's if the the response is one or a, please uh, show your uh, raise your hand. So actually, I have shown the uh, the correct answer. So let me show it. So correct answer is need of fiducial markers because we don't need fiducial markers with this technology. This is one advantage of this system. And what about question two? Which of the below is not used in MR Linux workflow in routine clinical practice? Image guidance with MR, adaptive radiotherapy planning according to the anatomy of today, CNAMR tracking and tumor response prediction.
excuse me, I got a phone call. So uh, this is our uh, second question and I need your response. So Dr. Srofel, I don't know how you're gonna do that, but yeah. so I'll leave this to you. Yeah, there are mixed answers from the, the participants. So most of them say uh, number four is answer. And then there is also an answer of uh, number one and number two. Do you want me to show the correct answer? Yeah, 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 you proceed. The correct answer is tumor response prediction. As I said, as I mentioned during my talk, this technology doesn't have, uh, does have the uh, tumor response prediction with different uh, MR. Uh, sequences, but uh, as this is not a clinically, uh, it, as this is a research protocol, clinically we don't use it uh, in daily uh, routine clinical practice. So I think these are the questions uh, I have shown. And I think you have also two more, Dr. Srafel. Are you going to show it? Yeah, or? yeah. yeah. I can present it. So let me screen no, pro here. Professor, we have we have created a Google a Google form uh, because yeah. we use this one as a proxy indicator for their attendance to provide them uh, CU, yeah. uh, so that it is better uh, if they the participant complete the, the question, then answer, then the, then after you you can give uh, the answer. Let us wait for five five minutes so that all can uh, attempt the question. Then after you can summarize it. Uh, thank you, Professor. Okay. Dr. Srofar, okay, so you, yeah. can, you can show the, your, the questions. Yeah, I'll show the questions now. Just wait a minute. So I think you can see the questions. Okay, so you can so, you can read or I can read. Yeah. So the the third question is in the first question I'll put here. Let's just wait a few minutes for the participants to, to put their answers in the link provided. And then we can, I mean, if there are any further questions from the group, we can, we can, we can continue. There are any further questions, please everybody put it in the link. I mean, put it on the chat box. Uh, uh, Doctor, uh, I, I advise the participants to use the Google form. The Google form uh, will send us their email address and uh, their score. Mm -hmm. We use that one to certify. So is they yeah. better use the Google form than uh, the displayed one. Okay, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so are there any share questions? The Google form. Hmm. So I think it's visible now, right, Kenneth? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So let's just wait a little bit for the participants also to, to answer these questions. So there, there's a one question on the chat box, Professor. It says, what is your experience in, in pediatric uh, MR radiotherapy? Yeah, actually, the, this machine was used uh, for the youngest patient in the world by our uh, group. We have treated a toddler at the age of one and a half years. 
uh, he had an embryonal uh, liver tumor and we have treated with this technology. So it's not a very you know easy machine for the kids because if you need anesthesia, you need to give general anesthesia and it's quite uh, difficult. But for the other patients, it can be used. Sorry for the audio. So we have the Google form, everybody, if you can find us. Can we proceed with the questions? Get in that. Okay. Are you going to present or am I? Should I? Okay. Let me check how many of them responded because we do have 105 participants. Let me check uh -huh. the Excel sheet and then I will come back to you. Okay. Good. Uh, it's the same question repeated. How is the treatment in pediatric patient groups? I mean, you have given a brief explanation to this. Yes, I explained that. Uh, I explained that this is not a very mm -hmm. easy machine for because it's a long treatment time. Uh, but for certain patients, it may have benefit. Uh, but it's our, I mean, number of pediatric patients is very low. I mean, among all 800 patients, we had only we have treated only two patients so far. Uh, we can start almost 96 part one has responded. I think it is enough. Okay. 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 Good. So the the third question is which of uh, the following tumors can be treated by MR Linux? And then we have prostate CA, pancreatic CA, lung CA, and some metastatic <laughs> uh, cancers. And uh, so as Professor presented in the presentation, all of these uh, cancers can be treated, whether it depends on the area or the specific target of these cancers, and it can be treated. All, all of the cancers presented here can be treated. So the next question is, uh, which one of the following is true? It's uh, It says with different options about VMATs and IMRT. So the answer for this is uh, all, the all except B or the last option. So the normal IM, IMRT machine, what is around the patient during radiotherapy beam in an arc shape. So uh, which this one of, of, the, of the listed above, this one is, all, all are true, this one is a false one. So these are the questions from the participants, for the participants. So I think we have finished the questions and if there is uh, nothing to add more or if there are no questions more, we can just uh, remind our participants uh, about Professor uh, Ines. So Professor Ines is a uh, Professor of Radiation Oncology at Achibarim Maslak Hospital. So Achibarim Maslak Hospital is part of the Achibarim Healthcare Group. Uh, so Achibarim Healthcare Group in total has uh, 24 hospitals in five, in five countries in the world, and it's part of the largest healthcare group. And then we have, uh, my name is Dr. Surafid Zaudi. I'm a case manager at Achibarim at this our health points. So our health points assist patients in getting second, second hand opinions to their diseases to by such doctors as Professor Ines. And if there are uh, no further things from you, Professor, I think we can proceed. Okay.
Actually, thank you very much for your participation. I would like to send my best wishes to all our colleagues in Ethiopia. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Thank you everyone for participating and then I'll wish you a good day.